Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. We talk often on this program about the banking functions of the Treasurer's Office, but there is another financial division within the office that isn't mentioned quite as often. I'm talking about debt management. This division serves as a central information source concerning the occurrence, recording, and reporting of debt issued by the state, as well as its agencies, boards, commissions, and authorities. Joining me now to talk more about this is Brian Archer, Deputy Treasurer of Administration for the State Treasurer's Office. And Brian, you also have been doing debt management for the state for many years. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Gina. And, uh, you know, a lot of people hear about debt and bonds uh, here in the state, but they don't really understand exactly what all that entails and what the Treasurer's Office role is in all that. So let's just take a step back and, and sure. talk about this broad view of what is debt management, what does that mean, and what is the purpose of the division? The, a lot of people, when you say debt management or bonds, their eyes glaze over, they fall asleep. <laughs> don't, don't, don't turn off your TV. Because it is interesting. It, it's, um, the function uh, started because back in the early 1990s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, there was no central place to go within state government where you could find out all of the debt obligations that the state had. Because there are more than 20 boards and authorities and commissions, as you mentioned, that can issue debt that have the statutory authority to issue and to incur debt. And so um, there were some legislators who were thinking you know, it would, be, it would be nice if there were one central location where we could go or maybe a division within an office that would compile a report to help us realize how much debt do we have. And at that time, there was no one who could put their finger on an exact number. Sure. And so um, they came, it was something that was, there was a movement across the country uh, to, for this, for a state debt management um, network, as sure. it were. And so um, the, we, we started studying this and looking into it. We worked with the National Association of State Treasurers in, you know, trying to find out how did they start debt management. Yeah, that's interesting. You mentioned the National Association of State Treasurers because I know Treasurer Purdue is a member and has been um, with that organization for many years. And they now have quite a network of people that deal with debt, um, of course, in other parts of the nation as well, not just in West Virginia. Right, because it, it, we are all so different. With 50 states, there's 50 ways to issue debt. I mean, there's some of the authorities exist within a different department, but a lot of them are within the state treasurer's office. And so the legislators decided that they were going to put this function within the state treasurer's office. So now it's in code, right? It that is in the code. The treasurer's office, the treasurer himself, is responsible for compiling the debt numbers and the debt figures of the state. What, what does that really mean? What does the treasurer compiling all that information mean? Well, uh, it, it, it actually kind of grew out of the fact that the state treasurer is responsible for paying the principal and the interest on all of the state's general obligation debt. And that is the debt that is where the voters have voted, the legislators have uh, taken that yes vote and turned it into legislation and issued bonds. The treasurer is responsible for making payments on those bonds. And so um, it was, that's what it grew out of is the fact that we already had a wealth of that information for the state's debt. Um, Really what it means for the state is that there is a central place. What we do is every quarter, we ask each agency within state government, what debt do you have? And what debt payments have you made? And we take that information, we compile it into a report, a comprehensive report, and the investment community, the bond community, all of these different financial pieces out there they use that report so that they're aware of how much debt that the state has. And that's... 
And, and so you compile this report. It does help other agencies, and it does help the state in a lot of different ways. Having this information, as you said, there was a need for it, and that's how right. it grew um, into becoming a division in the treasurer's office. So how does it help state agencies and maybe outside entities um, with uh, the, just the, having that knowledge at their fingertips? Sure. Uh, well, the general public, there are, there are different people that, it, that it's going to help. The general public knows on a quarterly basis, if they look at this report, they know how much debt that the state has. And we even put interesting information in there, such as how much debt per person. We take the 1.8 million and we divide it into the debt that we have and say, you know, if all of our debt came due tomorrow, every person in West Virginia would owe $164 or whatever the, the number right. comes up to. And so it's good for the general public to know. It's good for our legislators to know because every year we are faced with new financing opportunities or issues. You know, are, is there too much debt out there? And if we incur more debt, what could that possibly do to our, how much debt we have outstanding? Sure. Um, the investment community, uh, people who actually buy our bonds, the, the large investment houses, the J.P. Morgans, the Bank of America, the Citigroup, all of these that buy our bonds, they look at this report and they say, hmm, do they have too much or what type of debt do they... General obligation debt is the most secure debt that you can have. And when they look and see they don't have a lot of geo debt or they do have a lot of geo debt, they can make their decisions as to whether or not they want to invest their money in West Virginia. And we just saw the website was up on the screen. That information is on wvtreasury.com. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people wouldn't think uh, to ever go on the treasurer's website to say, hey, I'm going to see how much debt the state is owed. <laughs> um, but it is, it is information that is out there and that we provide the right. people of the state. And it's very easily accessible on wvtreasury.com. Um, and you said this report is compiled on a quarterly basis, and there's also an annual report. Is that correct? We are required by statute to do a quarterly report. We do an annual report that is more comprehensive, that sums up the year. And that is not required by code, but we think that it's a good way to sum up what has gone on throughout the year. Yes. And so is this a reporting mechanism? How does this fall in the scheme of things as far as the state goes? It's, yes, it is, um, it, that is our main function, is to uh, the quarterly debt report. We do have another report, which we are required by statute to do, and it is the debt capacity report. And what it examines is the, what is the debt going to be five years and 10 years from now? And how much capacity do we have to issue more debt in the future? And so that is another report that's required by statute. It comes out in January of each year. And so that's, a, that's another reporting mechanism that, that we are required to do. You don't hear a lot about this in the news. Um, sometimes you hear about GO bonds or those general obligation mm -hmm. bonds. You will hear about that. Uh, once in a while, and you do hear about the credit rating sometimes in the news. And uh, just uh, briefly, we talked about this earlier, but but there are these agencies that give credit ratings to the state, and a lot of that has to do with, it, with debt. Can you tell us how the treasurer's office and this type of information that we put out there um, really plays a part in S and P um, and and some of the other agencies that do the ratings? Sure, there are uh, there are three major agencies. Um, financial agencies that examine each state's debt and they give them a, a rating on their general obligations. Uh, it would, it's Standard & Poor's, uh, Moody's Investor Services, and Fitch Investors. And these three, there are other rating agencies out there, but it's just like, you know, the commercials where the people are checking their credit rating on their phone and they, no, don't check your credit rating, it's no. <laughs> It's, it's, it's almost kind of like that. There, it's, it's an agency that rates you. What is your credit rating? Right. Just like any bank would do to you if you went in for a mortgage, they would look at your credit rating and say, 
How she's in debt a, are you? She's a good risk because yeah. you know she makes her payments on time. She she has a good uh, debt to income ratio. She they look at all of these things, and it's the same way for the state of West Virginia, because S and P, uh, Moody's, and Fitch, they look at is the state paying its bills on time? How much debt do they have outstanding? How much revenue do they have coming in versus how much of that is going towards debt service payments? And that's what our reports help them um, examine. And it's, it's available quarterly. So they, they love the fact, it, I'm probably being a little biased because <laughs> I think that they really love the fact that that information is available to them on a quarterly basis because a lot of states, if they don't do the quarterly report, they have an annual financial report. And so by the time that information comes out, it's stale. Right. Our information is a little more fresh and it's a little more current. Right. And again, I'm talking with Brian Archer, who deals with uh, compiling the debt for the state here in the treasurer's office, and he's a deputy of administration. Um, we also were talking about where you can find this information. You can go to wvtreasury.com to find information about debt in the state. But talking about the debt management function and what it has to do with bonds, we've talked a lot about that. But I understand there was a particular bond that took a lot of work and research when this responsibility first came under the treasurer's office. Can you talk a little bit more about that and maybe give us some insight? Because I know you've been in, I, this, in this position for a while. I've been in this position for 28 years. I started when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. You've aged well. <laughs> right, thanks. <laughs> no, um, one bond in particular. When, when your great-grandfather or your someone in your family passes, you go through their belongings and you find things. And that's how all of this started on what I call the, it, it's, it was bonds issued through the Commonwealth of Virginia, but it was called the West Virginia Certificate. And yeah. someone went through their great grandfather's belongings, they found this and they wanted their money because on the bond it said, payable at the, tre payable at the office of the state treasurer of West Virginia in gold coins. Wow. And uh, it said, all you have to do is present it to the treasurer of the state of West Virginia, and you get your gold coins. And so they, they bring in this bond. And when did they bring and, this in? Uh, this was, I want to say around 1994, 95 so is when this not dealing in surfaced. gold coins too much anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if it, if, if they would have actually gotten the value of a gold coin, they probably would have given them a little sliver of, you know. You're right. Um, but what it was, uh, it, everyone with it in the office was looking at me like, well, what do we do? And I, did, I had no idea because I didn't know this piece of West Virginia history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the state actually became, West Virginia actually became a state on June 20th, 1863. But between 1863 and 1939, 1939 is when we finally settled everything. All of the finances, wow. everything that the Supreme Court rulings and, and that's, these bonds came out of that turbulent time in West Virginia history. Uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia decided that they knew what our portion of their debt was. And so they issued bonds that said, you take the certificate to the treasurer of West Virginia and he'll pay you in gold coins. Wow. So was it ever um, able to be paid out? How did that, how was yeah, that resolved? It's, it's a, it is an interesting piece of history to read. And I actually have information in the office if anyone's interested. It's a, a paper that was, was done on this topic. Um, West Virginia agreed that yes, we did owe a certain debt because we were part of Virginia. And when we broke with them in uh, 1863, that we would take on some of the debt. Sure. But they never really officially agreed on the figure. We kept going to the, the uh, US Supreme Court and they ruled and then we issued bonds and then they issued bonds on our behalf and so, there was finally in, like I said, in 1939, there was the final resolution. The legislature said, 
you know, we've, had a, we've done a good faith effort of trying to pay all of these West Virginia certificates that are out there. And as of this day, they are null and void. Wow. So it was, a, it was a, a very interesting piece of, of history. That is very interesting. A lot of history comes mm -hmm. out of this. And, and um, I think, you know, people, when they look at these offices, uh, the Office of State Treasurer and some of the other constitutionally uh, mandated offices, they don't realize all the history and all the interesting right. facts that come out of um, these positions because they are elected positions, but then you have staffers um, like yourself who've been here for many years who've been able to keep things running, so to speak. Um, we're talking about debt management in particular, and I'm sure there are a lot of tasks that you're responsible for as we talk about debt management and just compiling the reports that, that we've talked about earlier. Can you give us some scope of what are all the tasks that that are entailed with um, keeping control of the state's debt? Sure, uh, our main function, and actually our function that is it, it, what I call mission critical, is servicing the debt of the general obligation debt of the state, making sure that the general obligation bonds are paid for in a timely manner because there are deadlines that we have and we have to make, and if we don't get the funds to the proper place at the proper time, the state could uh, go into, technically, go into default because we, you know, if we don't have the money there, we've defaulted on our bonds. And so that's, that is our main function, is to pay the general obligation debt of the state. And when I first started out in debt management, I was a bond registrar. And what that was, people, I don't know if you, do you remember the coupon books where you'd cut out a coupon sure. and take it in? Bonds were issued as coupon bonds. It was a big sheet and you cut off a little coupon, you take it into the treasurer and he would give you your $143. And every six months you would clip a coupon. And my job when I first started was, I was, anytime someone wanted to register those bonds in their name, they would bring them in and I would register them. Wow. And um, things have changed a lot since then. Things have changed unbelievably because right now um, everything is registered under one name, which is the Depository Trust Company in New York. Everything's registered through them. So we only have one registered bondholder, which is DTC. Yeah. But um, an interesting story is that um, I used to, you know, these people come in and you, you start to develop kind of a relationship with them. And so I would, every six months, I would pay interest and I would write letters to the people and say, here's your interest payment check. And, and uh, this one lady, and she was an elderly lady, and I, I just loved talking to her. And it was coming up to the fact that her bond was going to be due. Right. And so she was going to get the principal, not just the interest every six months. She was going to get the $10,000 that was the principal on the bond. And uh, she actually came in the office. I helped her fill it out and we put it in a FedEx envelope and that was on September 10th, 2001. Wow. And um, it was sent to the World Trade Center in New York. Oh my That's goodness. where the processing was gonna take place. Right. And it arrived early morning, September 11th, 2001 and her bond was ultimately, her $10,000 bond was ultimately destroyed in the terrible tragedy that we had in New York. What a, on, what a story, yeah. wow. And I, she called me crying. She said, I don't care about my money, but I, she said, I hate to, you know, I don't wanna complain about it, but I really do need that money. Yeah. She said, but I just don't wanna do anything right now because it's, you know, it's a, such a terrible, tragedy. Right. But um, I said, you stick with me and we'll get your money. Did, were you able to help Event, her out? Eventually, That's uh, we, we were able to. Of course, you know, uh, it, it took some time. Sure. It took some time, but sure. we, and she thanked me. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, very rewarding experience. Yes. Right. Uh, this job can be for sure. That's, that's a fantastic story and I, and I appreciate you sharing. Um, there's a lot more I want to get into, but I'll, 
Uh, I appreciate you talking about the debt management functions of the state treasurer's office, but we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we return, we will talk more with Brian Archer on some of his other duties here in the treasurer's office. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Babies are expensive. Formula, diapers, daycare. That's just the first year. Oh, wish you could start saving for college now. The Piggy Bank Ferry is granting wishes of college savings to new parents by contributing $100 when you open a Smart 529 account. Enroll in West Virginia's Smart 529 Bright Babies program before your child's first birthday or gotcha day, and we'll contribute $100 into your Smart 529 college savings account. Wishes do come true. Register in the first year, so when they sit up, it's time to sign up. To learn about Smart 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the official statement available from smart529.com. Check with your home state to learn if it offers tax or other benefits for investing in its own 529 plan. Welcome back. You're watching Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins, and I'm here with Deputy Treasurer and Director of Debt Management, Brian Archer, with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. And Brian, I appreciate you being here today, talking a lot about debt and something that we were joking earlier isn't quite all that um, exciting, <laughs> but uh, you've shared some really uh, heartfelt stories about uh, ways you've, you've been able to help people through this process mm -hmm. and just the important history of debt management here in the state of West Virginia. So I appreciate that. Um, and I know you're bringing on some Someone new now to help take over some of the responsibilities because this is such a big job with compiling these reports on a quarterly and annual basis for the state. So, is there anything else you'd just like to share about um, debt here in the state and, and the general the the geo bonds and the and uh, what we do in the treasurer's office? Sure, I, I'm actually uh, not bringing someone on to help me. I'm bringing someone on to replace me <laughs> as the director of debt management because my job has actually morphed into something else. And so um, we have a new director of debt management and her name is Joellen Lucas. And once she gets up to speed, she'll be sitting up here talking to you about debt. Um, she was actually able to go through with me the, uh, one of the largest issuances of general obligation debt that the state has experienced to date. Um, you know, the, the voters said yes to the Roads to Prosperity Amendment. Right. And that authorized uh, more than a billion dollars worth of bonds that, that could be issued. Uh, approximately 1.6 billion can be, can be issued through that constitutional amendment. And just a couple of weeks ago, we finally closed on our first issuance. And I... <laughs> I know this is going to sound strange, but I got chills running down my spine when I realized we were getting all of this. This it's a big one. It's, yes, it's a big, uh, a big thing for the state. Eight hundred million dollars to go to invest in the infrastructure, the roads of our state, and just to see that the voters, that the citizens, have that much faith in the state to invest this large amount of money because if. If the highway funds are not available to pay the debt service, the voters have voted and taxes have to be raised right. to pay that debt. And that's how much faith they have in the fact that this is going to help our state. And I, I think it's a I think it speaks volumes to looking forward to the future of West Virginia. And what our state is putting as a priority. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Um, well, it's exciting to see how this will all play out, and mm -hmm. uh, I know you'll be with us even though you're not going to maybe <laughs> be the director of debt management anymore. Right. You'll be right there um, helping with this process as well. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about when we, we were talking about um, the debt of the state and just the debt management of the state? Anything else you'd like to share from the Trevor's, treasurer's office perspective? No, just that I, th I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. I, I believe that because our general obligation debt had had gotten down to you know where it was a very small piece of our debt, and the fact that we you know we hadn't had a constitutional amendment since 1996, so 
20 years. Right. Yeah, so it was, I, I think it was time. And I, I think that, uh, I think Joellen's going to do a great job. That's fantastic. Again, people can go to wvtreasury.com for information on uh, the debt obligation of the state. Before we go, we have about three minutes left. Um, you have a lot of other responsibilities at the state treasurer's office. That's part of the reason why um, you're bringing on a new debt management director. But revenue distribution is another big one that mm -hmm. you uh, tackle and um, you and your staff deal with. Tell us just a quick overview of what revenue distribution is and why it's under the treasurer's purview. Sure. Um, we are the bank of the state of West Virginia, and um, we, we issue these um, distributions to one of our big one is uh, to volunteer fire departments. We have more than 420 volunteer fire companies out throughout the state of West Virginia. And we are responsible for making sure that they get their quarterly money and, and helping them, you know, make sure that all of their banking information is correct. And, and um, so it's, it's a huge responsibility and you get to really meet or talk on the phone with a, with a lot of the, the local companies when, and letting them know when the money's gonna be there and how much it is. And, what they have to do to make sure that they that they get their their funds and these um, distributions come from taxes fees it's it yes. just depends on what is out there in state code right. that eventually uh, would be collected by the tax department and come to the state treasury and then it's our responsibility um, it's the state treasurer's responsibility to ensure that that is distributed correctly. that it's properly distributed the, the actually the VFD funds come from the insurance commissioner because it's on a a surcharge on the um, your insur your home insurance premium, um, but yes, the tax department collects uh, the receipts for coal severance, uh, wine and liquor, um, coal bed methane. There there are there's probably quite like a twenty few. some or yeah, thirty there, some yeah. I think that. There's a lot. Of the different distributions. And again, I, I want to remind our audience that we're talking about revenue distribution in the state, something the state treasurer's office does. You can go to wvtreasury.com, and there are comprehensive reports on there on the distributions. And I know a lot of reporters will sometimes call asking mm -hmm. for those figures. Um, we try to make it easy for them to find online under the revenue distribution under the cash management section of right. the site. Um, anything else you'd like to add about that function of the treasurer's office? It's it's an important function. It's it's one that uh, is, I would say, sort of high profile because there there are a lot of municipalities and counties and county, city and county governments that they rely pretty heavily upon the funds that they get from us, Absolutely. and so they want to make sure that they're dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's and making sure that, you know, that, that they get those funds timely and we want them to get them timely. All right. Deputy Treasurer of Administration, Brian Archer, thanks so much for joining us and I appreciate the conversation on debt management of the state as well. That's all the time we have now for Treasury Notes. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember, you can always get the latest news and information from the State Treasurer's Office, as I said earlier. Follow us on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and of course, our website. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office.